Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Dr. PJ the past. Everybody call me Dr. PJ. Welcome one more time to our spiritual deliverance prayer segment. This program is sponsored by I Am Reunion by Dale S. Jr. Again, I want to introduce you to the spiritual warfare deliverance bottle which is a bottle axe warfare but before that i want you to understand that you must go through your own personal deliverance in this segment i will be teaching you about how your personal deliverance is very important for you to overcome and move up to the other spiritual level without your personal deliverance you will not be able to defeat the enemy or overcome so i want to empathize that personal deliverance boot camp will start in this segment this is part one of your personal deliverance boot camp and it's necessary for me to teach this personal deliverance boot camp because it is the it is the mandate of god and the mandate of the holy spirit through the blood of jesus that i will bring this segment to you to all i myself have been through my own personal deliverance and i want to start this evening with a prayer father god cover each and every one of us that we are here united on i am reunion father god give them an open heart an open mind so they can understand the word of god and what you are doing in our lives as a humble servant father god I humble myself unto you asking for a double portion of the anointing let it fall upon me like the prophet Elijah let it fall upon me Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Father God as I bring forth your word to touch each and every one and to strengthen them and give them the power to overcome which is your power the power of the resurrected blood the power of the word the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name I pray. And we will begin this evening in this segment of personal deliverance warfare. We have some points. And the first set of points that I want to bring to the table. As you open up your Bible and will get your notepad. Because this is uh, what the Holy Spirit is guiding me to do for all of us. Is about your spirituality. Remember you live in two worlds. You live in the physical world which is your flesh and blood, your body. That's one of your personal bodies. The second one is your spirit. We must remember that we live in two worlds. We live in the spiritual world at the same time that we live in the flesh world. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. But within that body, you have your own spirit. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9. So when a person pass away, that intellectual, the soul, the spirit, the mind, go all the way back to the Father. The Word of God said the dead have no memory anymore. Because then you'll be in the presence of God. Whether on the left side of the lake or the right side of the lake in the bosom of Abraham. But people don't understand that everything that you see happening in the physical realm is already took place in the spiritual realm. Everything has to take place in the spiritual realm before it can take place in the natural realm. So there's no such thing as the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. But everything is 
done first in the spiritual. It has to happen first in the spiritual for it to manifest in the natural. And we're going to move forward. The purpose of your personal deliverance boot camp is for you to have a spiritual understanding and attain to the foundation that you need in order to move forward to the higher level. And some people call it, um, well, I have, you know, we used to teach like um, new beginners, you know, the new beginners are people that come from the world and they accepted the Lord, they walked down the aisle and then they, we set them up in a, in a new beginners class. But everybody have a way of doing things. We doing it God way because we are in the spiritual garden of the Lord right now. You know, we with God now in the spiritual realm, in the ether waves. And the first, the first thing I want to explain that in the personal deliverance boot camp, you have to, to understand that your discernment need to grow. You have to be able to discern the spirits. Like if you're dealing with a person who is in front of you, but you in the spiritual realm, you can pick up that the person is actually an alcoholic, a drug dealer, a criminal, a womanizer. You know, some people are totally spiritually blind, totally spiritually deaf, totally spiritually mute. Everything in their senses is just blocked in. And the reason why they have spent so many time acting out in the flesh. Like they have not realized that they are in a spiritual bondage. So this personal deliverance boot camp is going to help you grow in the spiritual realm in the Lord. It's going to help you and your family and your children. It's going to help you, your finances. It's going to help you in many areas of your life. It's going to help you develop the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit must be developed through the Word of God. And we're going to begin because there are many doctrines of devils and demons out there that have programmed people's mind. Number one, men tradition will program you to be really believe that Adam and Eve ate actually an apple. Like the sin in the garden was an apple. But I'm here to deprogram all these fallacies these lies and these doctrines of devils and demons that they have put into your spirit i'm here to clean that gutter in your mind out and throw out the the, the bad stuff and keep the good and i'm going to confirm the word to you and part of the confirmation of the word is that the holy spirit of god and through the word of god want you to learn what is right from wrong you must learn what is right from wrong, what is acceptable unto the Lord and what the Lord don't want you to do. And it's all dependent on your choices and lifestyle that you live, the choices that you make on a daily basis. You must know what is right from wrong spiritually. You must know what is good and evil. God want us to, to draw the line spiritually and to say, and which side are you on? Are you on the Lord's side or are you on the worldly and the devil's side? You know, Satan have a way of calling good things and good people and the people of God evil. And then Satan is an inverter. They invert and call the evil things good. So remember, anything that is to satisfy the desire of the flesh in the moment whether it's anger slapping somebody in the face saying a cuss word and telling a lie all of these things then is what satan invert that's why we find so many christians that are actually believers but there is no sound doctrine in their life they do not have no discernment they do not have the gifts of the holy spirit and you can walk to church for 50 years and not know the Lord. They even have those in the pulpit that claim like they are bishop, pastors, and so forth. But they are wolves dressed up in sheep clothing. Who molest, rape, steal from the flock, do all kind of evils. 
and they teach doctrines of devils and demons actually from the pulpit and if you sitting there because you tired of the world and you want you love the lord you seek in the lord but then you enter into one of these satanic temples and when you enter into the satanic temple seeking god because you truly want to repent from your sin you get indoctrinized by devils and demons you get into a satanic covenant so this the personal deliverance boot camp is a must is a mandate from god that he placed upon me to go forward first in a personal deliverance boot camp before we can even enter basic training because God is looking for a few good men and women to make a stand against the Antichrist. We are in the end time. We are in the pre-tribulations now. And your soul depends on you being personally deliverance from all ism and schism, from all fallacies. And you must know first what is right from wrong, what is acceptable to God and what you don't want between good and evil between what is clean and unclean between what is holy and unholy with all with, it, with the difference between what is fruitful and unfruitful deeds uh, recognizing who is anointed by god and who is anointed by the devil satan recognizing the true word, the true word of God, Jesus Christ, from the words of the Antichrist and the doctrines of the Antichrist. Also, to be able to discern between who is blessed and who is cursed. And you must able to recognize the truth from lies. Because truth sometimes sounds like truth, but it's not truth. You only have to change one little vowel or word in there because that's what happened to Eve in a garden. God gave the man Adam, which is the first Adam, the commandments and the, 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 the wife Eve, everything was passed down because he was the one that made the covenant because the woman, the man is the head of the woman and the head of man is Jesus. Almighty God. So being a man, being overhead, we must be submissive to the man of God or submissive to the prophetess of God. But I myself understand that as a woman, God created a man over me. So I don't mind submitting to a man so long as he is a true man of God. Again, with the spiritual discernment, you'll be able to recognize what is decent from what is vulgar. Because a lot of vulgarity, indecency is happening in the church. Not only in the world, but in the church. That's why God said judgment begin where? At the house of God. He is going to start judgment first at his house. Meaning, all the spiritual leaders in the church... Then the spiritual leaders in the church and the women, they're going to be judged first. So there's a lot of judgment going on right now in heavens in the court of the Lord. Then you have the, the rulers, the, 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 the leaders, the people in the politicians and stuff. And then your supervisors and managers who mistreat and steal in wages. So as we move on in this personal deliverance boot camp, we're going to let you understand that there are some points that you have to keep in mind and i'm going to give you scripture i usually use um the king james version because i'm old school but you can use whatever version amplify nsb whatever version of the word of god that you feel comfortable in and i just said get your pencil and papers you can always rewind the tape but this is what we're going to start out first. What is almost important for each and any of us, even if you've been saved 20, 30 years, but you backslided because, you know, the devil tempt us and we be led away with our own flesh because there's two men, you know, the flesh going to always war against the spirit, right? Because the spirit, the spirit is stronger than the flesh, but the flesh does overpower and say, let me go ahead and do whatever I want to do. You know, so that's why we got to learn to, rebuke ourselves and, and say flesh be still in the name of jesus 
the first thing we have to do to be in good communication and in good standing with the Lord. The word of God said, if your brother offend you, how much time you must forgive them? 70 times 7. So you, you can forgive your brother 490 times per day. Or if you sin against God, you know, 490 times that you ask for God, you, you truly repent. Oh, something happened. It came out my mouth. Oh, it's a white lie. Repent. Repent from that white lie. Repent. So repentance is very important. And we go into the book of First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he say he is faithful. See, God is faithful. He wants you to truly, truly repent for your evil deeds. Just go before him and lay it out. Lay it out on the table. Luke, we turn it now to Luke chapter 13, verse 3. It says, let you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And what the prophet is saying, if you deny it, if you say no, there is nothing that going to let you enter the kingdom of God, but you need to repent in order for you to be saved. Some people take salvation as a game. They go down every Sunday asking for salvation. No, you, you get saved one time only. And that I'm not talking about anything on the 12 because some people are even 12 or 13 and they're not really understanding when they walk down to say, I uh, accept the Lord. But if you accepted the Lord 20 years ago and you was in your right mind and you was conscious of like 15, 16, and you accepted the Lord and you got baptized, or even if you didn't get baptized, it's okay. Because the thief on the cross, he did not have any time to run and get baptized or he was baptized before. But you must repent or you will perish mean perish mean eternal death eternal damnation and sitting in hell in the book of second peter chapter 3 9 it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but it's long suffering toward us most word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and we know that the word say in matthew chapter 3 2 and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so the foundation for your eternal life for you to receive your anointing for you to receive your blessings, you have to truly, truly, truly repent. We all have to repent. We must repent of our ways, our evil ways. We might be doing something that we don't believe is sinful because we just don't know. So we sin by omission, commission. You know, we sin out of ignorance. You see, and in Acts chapter 17, verse 30, it states, And the times of this ignorance God wink at, but now commanded that all men everywhere to repent. So we have our fear warning. Without repentance, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. Without repentance, we cannot get the blessings that we need. Without repentance, we cannot get the gift of the Holy Spirit. Without repentance, we cannot move up to any other level. So we move to another point. The other point is restoration. God wants each and every one of us to be restored. 
Even if we live in captivity, we live in a world, we live in sin all our life and we never knew Christ. The Lord know that the kingdom of darkness in the spiritual realm had kept us in bondage to generational curses and all of these evil. And that we have a, uh, uh, we have a lot of demons attached. When a person come into the church, they have to go through the, the new members class and the deliverance class. But that personal deliverance is needed because... And you're dealing with a lot of uh, uh, stuff. You're brought, bringing in a lot of baggage with you, with you into, 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 into church. And you cannot bring them into the kingdom of God. So uh, I'm only a voice uh, and that's mandate to, to teach and to warn those that we got to let go in order to be restored. We repent and we let go. We cannot repent and continue in sin. You see? God does not give us an insurance to accept Jesus Christ and then say, oh, but we are saved by grace. You know, even in my life, um, somebody was trying to tell me that when I was like 25, that comes, you know, we are saved by, by grace and adultery is okay. And I looked at that bishop and I said, listen, I know what the word of God say. Adultery is a fruit of evil spirits. So you see, you have to be familiar with the word. What is right from wrong, what is clean from unclean, what is holy from unholy. You need to know these things and lay the foundation, not only for you, but you can teach your children and your grandchildren. You want to pass it on to your family members, to a neighbor, to a friend. You want to let your light shine. And then I want to give an example of Job. But keeping in mind, Job never sinned against God. His friends falsely accuse him of sinning against, against God. But what Job was going through, he was going through a test. And during this test, the enemy, the devil was challenging God and challenging him and saying, Oh, uh, he only worshiping you because um, you give him these little things and you give him riches and you have him living good and he's a judge. See, Job was a judge in the land. He sat at the gate and judged righteously he was a man of god he had riches he had his children but he loved god so that's a challenge anytime you get anointed and you moving up to another level you know the devil's going to tempt you the devil's going to challenge you he's going to challenge your new walk he's going to say look this so-and-so person she was him um, dr pj used to for example used to used to serve me in the world she used to party and get drunk and blah 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 and she did whatever she want because her body belongs to me her mind belongs to me but the devil said no god tell the devil no she no longer belongs to you she's being restored and it says here in, in, in it says in the king james version job 42 verse 10 and the lord released job from captivity you see many uh, many people that's being captive right now Job being a, a believer, he was in captivity because God and the devil had a challenge. And the devil say, I will challenge you with him. Remove his protection, the edge of protection. See, all of us have an edge of protection. But when, when, when Job prayed for his friends, because his friends was wrong, they falsely accused him and say. He did something wrong. He did nothing. He was not an unbeliever. He did not do any sin against God. It was a challenge. And many of you have challenges in your life. But I'm here to tell you like all the challenges that the enemy put in your life. Bad relationship. God is able to restore you. And, and it says here in, in verse 40, in chapter 42 of the book of Job verse 10. It says he prayed for his friend also and the Lord gave Job twice as much that he had. And you can read in your version. And it says you're in the Amplify. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You see, he restored Job. He gave Job more children. He gave him a better wife. 
You see, he gave him more riches. He gave him more glory. And he elevated Job where the enemy could never come back and mess with him. Amen. And we're moving on to another point. A spiritual healing. Your spiritual healing consists of your body, spirit, and soul. God not only wants you to be healed spiritually, he wants your mind to be healed. He wants our mind to be healed. He wants our body to live in good health. He wants us healed body and soul and in our spirit. Some people's spirit is troubled because of the trauma, because of the past, because of the hurt, because of the sickness and the disease, because of all kind of thing, PTSD, you know, being in the wrong place, the wrong time, losing a loved one, losing a child, all of these things, being in a bad marriage, being in a bad relationship, having wicked evil supervisors come up against us, even managers come up against us. But God wants you to be healed. In Isaiah 41 verse 10 it say, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the hand of my righteousness. Amen. And that's what God is saying to us this evening. God did not leave us on this world alone. He sent the prophets. He sent Jesus Christ. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the gift. He said, call us prophets, preachers, you know, teachers, you know, evangelists. To God did not. He gave us the word. He gave us the word, which is Jesus is the word. He became flesh and dwelt among us. You know, he gave us all these testimonies. God did not leave us here so we can be lost but he gave us commandments for us to cross over and to live a righteous life in his presence and to one day we will be with him you see god did not turn his back on us but he said he will uphold us with his strength yes he will help me god will send help for you god will send somebody who who will do something for you if you pray and it says here in Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Your body need healing. Your mind need healing. Your spirit. But your physical body. Save me, and I shall be saved. Thou art my praise. Amen. That's what God said. And he's saying, Jeremiah 33 says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. God would even bring health to your body. He is a healer of the body. I will cure them and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And he's doing it right now. He's sending healing to your bones, healing from all your disease. You see, because Jesus himself was beaten all night long. He was beaten all night long. And by his stripe, we are Heal. And it says here in James chapter 5, verse 14, any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, which the extra virgin olive oil, which is symbolic of the blood of Jesus. When the children of Israel was in Egypt and Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, I'm going to kill the, the, all the firstborn. That curse was reversed back to to the to Egyptians and every firstborn of Egypt and man and beast died that night because God sent the death angel. But God warned the children to take the blood of the lamb. It had to be a virgin lamb, whether male or female, and to cut the head and drip that blood and to take that blood and put it upon the doorpost. What we use today is the extra virgin olive oil that Abraham used and it's been passed. Down through generations that anointing oil is what we anoint our bodies we anoint of anything that is sick if you have a sick body a sick home a sick man you pour that oil and whatever area of your body even drink some of that oil take a tablespoon and swallow it down let that anointing oil say i receive the blood of jesus and god will heal you and this is the end of part one of the personal deliverance boot camp again i appreciate you i love you in the lord and i thank you for being here and i am reunion this is your humble servant the servant of the lord dr pj 
And I just want to crawl, close out and say, Father God, touch each and every one of them. Keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. As you grow, you're going to grow. You're going to grow. And again, I defeat you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I defeat you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I defeat you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You be blessed, be encouraged in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.